As a new school year gets underway, parents, educators, and officials are taking a very close look at bullying. And with the explosion of technology, it's only getting worse. Yeah, tonight, 48 Hours Mystery airs a special called Bullying, Words Can Kill. And CBS News correspondent Tracy Smith is here this morning with a preview. Nice to see you, Tracy. Nice to see you guys, too. You know, one of the biggest problems with bullying is that kids don't want to report it. Only 25% of teens who are cyberbullied ever tell an adult. But we found some kids and parents willing to talk about what's happened to them, and they told us words can kill. You're supposed to feel comfortable and like you're scared to walk in the hallways. It just stops that feeling of desperation and pretty much hopelessness. Yeah, I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to go to. And I was scared. I wasn't going to have any friends. I wasn't accepted in school. I couldn't be who I am. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Middle school can be a place for learning. Um, it has the best farmland. Discovery. Now I'd like everyone to open their eyes. Look at all your wonderful friends. Friendships. But for some kids, it can also be a place of cruelty. They were like, oh, you're such a loser. Why are you doing that? Loneliness. I told them like a thousand times. Well, I, I said, wasn't... I'm left out. Fear. I was very, very scared to go to school every day. Johnny Cagno is an eighth grader at Birchwood Middle School in North Providence, Rhode Island. The school opened its doors last winter and gave 48 Hours unprecedented access. <laughs> we spent six months at Johnny's school because middle schools often ground zero for bullying. You're judged constantly, whether it's your, your orientation, your clothing, your, well, how you look, you know, everything. Since he can remember, Johnny has always been made to feel different. Growing up, you play sports. If you don't play sports, then you're weird or, you know, you just don't fit in. And all through my life, that's how it's been. I don't fit in. Already pushed out of two other schools because of bullying, Johnny was nearing his breaking point by the time he began seventh grade at Birchwood in the fall of 2009. How serious did it get for Johnny? He was hurting himself. He was cutting himself. And he would just, I hate myself. I don't want to live anymore. I hate my life. Nobody likes me. No one cares about me. And I just, I would just have to constantly just reassure him. I couldn't get those feelings out of his head. And you can't fix it? No. And not only you can't fix it, but you're driving him to school every day, dropping driving him off. Him. Yep. What I'm was that like? Horrible. Just so horrible. I felt every day like I was sending him off to war. You can't have a student achieve when they're going through something like this. Assistant Principal Tony Ann Meniz. They don't realize how much kids internalize this bullying, how a mean word, whether it's spoken or in cyberspace, can feel, you know, as powerful as a gunshot. They got inside my head. I would say, if I kill myself, I don't have to deal with this. You know, I won't have to deal with the bullies every day. It's incredible to see what these kids do have to go through. And it's so widespread. And I guess the question is, administrators can say they want to do this and make these changes, but they can't be everywhere with every kid all the time. So how can you monitor this? Th that's a great question. I mean, one of the things that we found in this Rhode Island school, which is doing a lot of things right, they're not perfect, but they're really trying, is they have anonymous bully reporting boxes where kids themselves can report the bullies and not be accused of being a snitch. Yeah. So that's one little thing that schools can do, but it's also changing the culture to just say, the bullies can't have the power, this is not right. If you see it happening, stand up and say something. And, that, and that's really what makes such a difference is being able to talk about it. I'm amazed at these kids and how 
how they're actually able to talk about it, because that's one of the hardest things for them to do, is to stand up and say something, because they're afraid it'll make it worse. But you're so right, and unfortunately, so often it does, and that's why we need to change the attitude that this isn't going to be tolerated, that it's not right. Oh, it's what, heartbreaking, and it's so scary, too. What can, what can parents do, though, because the kids, even though they are getting bullied, the last thing they want is for everyone to find out that their parents came to the school, right. or their parents are talking to the principal. So what can parents do to intervene to make sure things don't get to the point where it escalates, to the point where kids are thinking about suicide? Suicide or something along well, the, those lines. the first thing to do is just to have a conversation with your kids. Then the other important thing is if they are on the internet and they're on Facebook yeah. or other social networking sites, you've got to jump on to friend them, monitor their activities. You don't have privacy on the internet, kids. Sorry, I'm going to be there looking yeah. at what you're doing. And by the way, I own the computer. You're in my house. My rules. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, Tracy, Grace. nice to see you. Thanks.